Hello, and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I finally got to watch Meet The Feebles. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Meet The Feebles, which released in 1989. Written by Fran Walsh, Stephen Sinclair and Danny Mulleron. And directed by Peter Jackson. Yeah, why don't you give us the synopsis for Meet The Feebles. Well, the story follows a group of musical singing and dancing Muppet puppet things called the Feebles. They are planning their giant hour-long live Meet the Feeble variety show. Led by Heidi the Hippopotamus, who is going to be singing a massive musical number. We follow the group as they deal with drugs, rape... Violence, more drugs, sex, more violence, and vomit. Yippee! So, Peter Jackson had had some relative success with bad taste. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, he already was working on Brain Dead at the time, but didn't quite have the resources to, to put together yet to make that film. So he was working on Meet the Feebles in between the, these two projects. Yeah. And this was originally intended to be a TV series. But while he was traveling in, uh, I think, France at the time, promoting uh, his other film, mm. uh, the Japanese investors said, with Meet the Feebles, don't do a TV series. and Make it a film and we'll give you the financial support you need uh, to get this to get this made. So which, of course, he accepted quickly made some revisions to the script and then got to got to work on Meet the Feebles, which, yeah, since the film's completion, it, it came out on VHS tape. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of came out on DVD, in mm -hmm. which it was a, a rip of the VHS tape oh, that was no. sold on DVD and has never been... It's never appeared on streaming services. No. It's never had a Blu-ray update or transfer. No, nope. It's just kind of been left... In kind of limbo. No, even though Peter Jackson has said a couple of times he would quite like to restore this film along with some of the other ones, but it just hasn't kind of happened yet. Yeah. I heard about this film, you know, when I first started getting into Peter Jackson movies. Like, I'd seen Brain Dead, absolutely thought it was awesome. Jump back to Bad Taste, got, the, got them both on VHS. You know, like, I like. I started to get into him just before he hit the high life with obviously the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I know he'd done a couple of other movies leading up to that, like Heavenly Creatures. Um, Frighteners. Frighteners, yeah. Frighteners, that was another big one. I think, actually, I might have seen Frighteners before I'd even seen Bad Taste or got to Lord of the Rings. Because Michael J. Fox, I mean, Jesus. What an amazing performance in that movie. Um, and people had said to me when I when I mentioned that I liked Peter Jackson and I'd watched a couple of movies. They were like, oh, have you ever seen Meet the Feebles? you ever seen Meet the Feebles, Ian? And I'm like, no, what the fuck's that? And they're like, oh, you're going to love it. Oh, it's great. Oh, yeah. And yeah, just... Never, 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 never got to a point where somebody went, here, here's a copy of Meet the Feebles, off you go. And so it wasn't until, like, we sat down for the review and I'm like, finally, I'm gonna fucking watch this fucking movie. It's, like, just eluded me all my life. And the fact that you've said, like, like it's never gone to Blu-ray. You know, it's never been properly put onto DVD or anything like that. And even if it is, it's even rarer to find nowadays. That This this movie has just not even just gone underground. It was like somebody dug a grave and just went, in you go, and just threw it on, just forget it. Just just forget it. And I, I, I suppose I was a bit reluctant as well to sit and watch it because part of me had heard stories about the stuff that went on in this movie and i was saying this to gary before we turned the camera on that i just i don't know like watching it now like obviously what 89 so we're looking at least 30 30 plus years you know i i feel time has changed that some of these jokes just don't hit the notes like they used to you know maybe it's me Maybe I've changed I would as a say, person. I'm going to guess, yes, that you are old and cantankerous and moody. Well, and you... this film is juvenile. It is college, primary school kind of but antics it... and vulgarity. But it's not. <laughs> but it's not. It's it's adult story stuff. Yeah, but just it's... with a spin on it. To it's make juvenile it... humour. It's piss and fart jokes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jay and Silent Bob are piss and fart jokes. This is, this is, let's take real situations, stick them in a room with a bunch of Muppets, 
and then just make the jokes come off. So like, so like off the bat, we've got obviously the opening, they're singing, they're all happy, meet the Feebles, meet the Feebles, and you're like, oh yeah, okay. And then you've got Sebastian the Fox, you know, just giving, you know, giving it and moaning about Heidi, the fucking hippopotamus who comes out. You know, Heidi, voiced by Mark Hadlow, who, if you don't recognize Mark Hadlow, he, he did play Dory in The Hobbit. He's, he's a bit of a comedian, I think, from New Zealand as well. Um, I mean, the body puppetry of Heidi the Hippopotamus is done by somebody, somebody completely different. Like, I made a list in my he, notepad. He was one of the writers. Yeah, yeah, of just, just obviously, of all of the different people that were involved in all the different type of Muppets. Because there are just so many. You know, you've got the Hippo, you've got Bletch the Walrus, you've got the Giant Bulldog, you've got Sid the Elephant, you've got Arthur the Worm, you've got a fucking, I don't even know what the frog's called, but the frog is on some smack, he <laughs> fucking needs some problems. You've got Wobbert the Hedgehog, you've got Lucille the Poodle, you've got some fucking a warthog thing with a spiked golf club selling cocaine to fucking <laughs> Bletch the Walrus. It, it, it is <laughs> such an oddball ensemble of characters, but at least all of the animals and all of the puppets are so distinct yes. that you'll have no problem telling them apart, even in this grainy copy of this film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, everybody. We're going out live in 12 hours. Heaven forbid injecting some urgency into this occasion. But for God's sake, get a move on! But but as, it, as the story goes, so we've got Heidi who is like the main star of the Feebles. Um, but she's a bit overweight, you know? She's kind of losing her star appeal. The the flashback tells us that, that Bletch, you know, picked her up like, what, you know, two years before she turned 18? I don't quite know. Yes, yeah, You yeah. know, something like that. He found her. She was a great singer. So immediately I'm like, so he's a sleazy fucking, uh, you know, Weinstein type character. And we do see this because he's shagging Samantha the cat on the, <laughs> on the desk behind Heidi's back. And I'm like, like, all right, maybe I am an old cancanquerous old fart. But at the end of the day, if you got a missus on the side and you're fucking somebody else on the side, that's bad in my view. Oh, yeah, it is. Man. Right? So, like, this is, like, it's not funny. When, when it, <laughs> it's funny that it's Muppets that it's they're right. acting out these scenes. <laughs> that's the first thing, you know? And, of course, yeah, all, like, 95% of all of the characters in this film are utterly despicable, despisable characters that you are meant to hate. But when characters that you hate are doing horrible things to other characters you hate, it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of get that. I mean, like, when the, when the movie first starts off, like, you've got that moment where Heidi goes jogging. Yes. You know? It's so surreal seeing her, I... like, in the real world. Well, this is it. I'm like, okay, are they in their own feeble world? Like, because you don't really see any other humans. There's the, none. No. They, they, there's, like, one other human character, what, Abby the Contortionist. But he's a Muppet. He's a feeble puppet thing as well. But he's a human feeble puppet thing yeah. everybody else is some type of animal and you will not ever see another human being in the entire world like we've got modifications of morris miners driving all over the place we don't know who these <laughs> fucking driving it and so it just it felt like i i don't i felt like 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 i said if i was younger and a little less experienced with film i'd have been like oh yeah this is all fun i can just take it but part of me also wanted to see the outlying world you know because there are Vietnam flashbacks in this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Frogs go to war in Vietnam and fight Vietnam gophers. <laughs> so is so there other animal wars? Like, like they're yeah. in New Zealand, so was there an Iraqi war against Iraqi gophers? I'd imagine so. Like, all the real world events that have occurred have just happened in Feeble World, too. <laughs> Reenacted by Muppets, which is amazing. So we do have at least two very likeable characters. We get introduced to Robert the Hedgehog and Lucille the Poodle. Yeah. These are the two new hired people uh, yeah. into, the, into the Feeble show. 
And so we follow we follow Robert as he's going around. He gets introduced to all the characters, and so as an audience member, we latch on to him as we discover this feeble world. See now, see now, yeah, I wanted to latch on to him, but for me, the story felt like I was supposed to be focusing mainly on Heidi. She is the star of the feeble show, and she, she does get a lot of screen time as well. Exa yeah, exactly. And the, the 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 story kept jumping to Robert because, like, I didn't realize until we started talking that he had a, uh, he had a speech impediment, you know, right. speaking no R's and stuff. And and he just turns up and he's really nervous, you know. He he he's come to work for Bletch, you know, because he want he loves the Feeble Show. Like, how long has the Feeble Show been going for? Ever since Bletch found found Heidi, we don't know. It's literally it just feels like the main story is around Sebastian trying to get this this show on because if they go live they can get it syndicated they're going to make a shit ton of money but then obviously like you said the storyline also follows Robert trying to get with Lucille and Arthur trying to help with him but then the story is also focusing on Heidi and Heidi trying to obviously be the star and not eat too much cake and then on top of that we're jumping to Bletch while he goes off to fucking play golf with the weird walrus guy and they're doing drug deals on the fucking green <laughs> Yeah, that's great. I love the whole sequence where he's just like, okay, you know, I'm not going to give you the cocaine now, but you're going to meet me on the port. Well, well no, he, he goes to, uh, obviously, they, they go to buy the drugs, but he ends up buying the wrong drugs uh, from, from another dealer, which melts a guy's nose off. Yes. And then they decide, well, obviously, if we're getting fucked over, we're going to have to go down to the dock to, to, to steal these drugs. So there's like this whole fucking action sequence as well where Bletch and his guys go driving down there smashing through like crab Crabs. people <laughs> yes. like crab people and they fucking stab the walrus in the gut and steal and they the get drugs chased by them. a giant spider yeah what the fuck? decapitates and eats the other the other the, character the bulldog, the bulldog. Yeah. i mean what is that thing that comes out of the water it's a whale is it a whale? Yeah. I didn't because we'd seen it before. We've got. Uh, well, no, there was a similar creature in in the in, in the, the feeble basement. Yeah, basement. I thought yeah, it was the, it's same not the same thing. Because no. we have Trevor the Rat as well. Trevor the Rat hangs around the feeble stuff. Trevor the Rat is one of my favorite characters really? in the film. Because yes. he's a fucking. No, he is horrible. He is horrible. The whole sequence where he's trying to make his own porno oh, no. and there's a masked cockroach insect thing having sex with a cow or trying to bum the cow. I don't know, but she actually sits, sits on, on him. Oh, I thought it was my hemorrhoids. <laughs> Udders are so, so over now. <laughs> they're just, I don't know. They're, for me, it just seemed like there was a, there was a lot going on, which there is a lot going on. And then when you're just getting so many, you know, insensitive, vulgar, disgusting jokes, like, like, I love humour, don't get me wrong, and I love a good, vulgar, disgusting joke, but, like, we said it before, Team America would come, like, years after this, and I, I really like Team America because, to a certain extent, Team America kind of keeps you in that realism world, you know, and hones, sometimes hones back on the jokes a little bit by saying, oh, we're going to do this now. Now we're back to the joke. In Feeble World, it's just, like, vulgar joke after vulgar joke after vulgar joke after vulgar joke. I'm like, Mari, you need to, you need to kind of pull back a little bit um like you have the fly <laughs> the fly yeah the fly is uh it's like a reporter it is yeah and, and it's trying to get reporter, the yeah. scoop and it's writing and publishing these stories and it's uh it it discovers that uh the hare the rabbit harry the hare yeah. harry the hare who has been fornicating with all of the other rabbits in this massive rabbit orgy scene yeah <laughs> Gets the scoop and starts publishing these stories, but also follows up on the story. We find out that the hare has contracted the big one. Yeah. We don't find out what the big one is. We just think, like, I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, what, cancer? AIDS? Like, dyslexia? What is the big <laughs> one? Like, but I understand from the writing point of view that they couldn't, they couldn't say that, I suppose. Sure. So over the time, we just watched the degradation of this hare. You know, he just starts to get more sickly in the face and his eyes are pulling back. You know, there's like he's not even supposed to go out on stage. He's only got 12 hours to live. And what? He goes out on stage for the variety act and just vomits all over the <laughs> stairs. Like, like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I mean, 
Winyard the Frog. Like, I I thought this was going to be one of my favourite scenes, but I, 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 don't, I don't know if I can bring myself to write anything. He fucking, he's a, he's a knife-throwing frog who's a drug addict, a massive, huge drug addict. And you can tell when he's there with the knives that he's suffering and he fucking stabs his partner in the gut. So Sebastian gets this great idea that, oh, you know what? Robert the Hedgehog's been pissing me off on stage, so I'm going to make him part of the knife throwing act. And so when you're the frog is desperate to get some drugs off of fucking the rat, and the rat's just like, hey, you gotta wait, you gotta wait, I gotta pick it up, because obviously we've got to wait for fucking Bletch to pick up the drugs so we can sell them. And, and, and Winyard ends up just talking to, to Robert about his time in Vietnam. And like I said, we have Vietnam, Vietnamese gophers attacking. I mean, it's really funny. It's an entire extended sequence. And I know. <laughs> they, even, they even parody the deer hunter yeah. with, with the Russian roulette gun. Yeah. Oh, that, was, oh, that was incredible. That he, was absolutely incredible. Because Winyard gets rescued by one of his friends during a firefight. And then as they're escaping after the deer hunter sequence. He which, falls into a pit. Yeah, and he's like, help me, help me. And Winyard just fucking leaves him. <laughs> we hear the gunshot as he runs away. Yeah, I'm it's like... like oh. What the fuck? This drug addict fucking frog is like, a No wonder he's like, taking all these drugs because he is going to Vietnam, man. Yeah. When you're... When you're... But yeah, just like, I mean, eventually he does get some drugs, doesn't he? We see him with the injecting he himself. Fucking, yeah. yeah. But yeah, he still ends up on stage and still ends up murdering one of his... Uh... Well, yeah, he tries to... Well, he, 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 he hallucinates that uh, the hedgehog yeah. is one of the gophers. And so he just starts throwing <laughs> knives at him, trying to fucking kill him. Heidi, through this point as well, has been trying to not eat cake. And she ends up going to a bakery and just ends up... She's like, oh, I'm just going to have one. And then she kind of eats all the truffles and then she eats all the cakes. And then she takes a Black Forest Gatto back to the feeble HQ with her. And after eating it, she goes out on stage to practice her song and starts to fucking burp her ass off. And Sebastian gives her absolute fucking shit because it's in her contract that she's not supposed to eat chocolate before any performances because she knows what it does to her guts and things like that. And I'm sat there like, <laughs> are you telling me that she's got irritable bowel syndrome because she's not allowed to eat chocolate and you let her fucking eat chocolate? But well, they didn't let her. She she escaped and went and did it herself because she's dealing with... Because Bletch is too busy <laughs> off fucking Samantha the cat. And like, playing golf. What is and it? doing shady drug deals and driving through the asses of whales. I just like... Yeah, could you um, can, can, can you even imagine this? I mean, you don't need to. You're gonna see it. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just one thing after another, and that is what this film is. I, I I suppose that's how it generally feels: is that it's one vulgar joke after another, and another, which slowly escalates. Yeah, you know, the vulgar jokes just will get bigger and more gross, like until we end up with well, literal like. Right, um, hippo nudity. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you've got the moment with Sid the Elephant as well. So it turns out that Sid the Elephant ended up having sex with a chicken. Right. <laughs> and he's denying... And he's denying it. Yeah. He's like, oh, how does she know it's me? Oh, how does she know it's mine? And so the chicken comes <laughs> into the room. Chicken it's a fucking Ella chicken. Or chickafunt. I don't know, but it's a chicken with a fucking elephant face. And I'm like, I I'm kind of behind Sid... Because he seems the most innocent and not realising what's going on. But he, yeah, he he does redeem himself later on yes, when he, he gets he, he gets does. kneecapped. Yeah, and he is, fucking... he's blown out. <laughs> but it's 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 just to the point where you're just like, Alright, okay, you you're just building all of these different jokes up. You know, the the rat tries to get the, the guy who's got fucking, I don't know, was it sperm or some shit coming out of his nose for his nasal <laughs> sex yes. for the scene to replace the cockroach? And then the rat, after dealing with that situation, he's so obsessed with Lucille, he hears that Robert and Lucille are going to get engaged. So he drugs her and attempts to rape her. Now, like I said, I'm all for comedy, but drug raping women nowadays is not funny. 
Yeah, yeah, you I, know? I, I, know. And, I know this. And, and that, like, it's not that the situation made me feel awkward, but I, like I said, 20 years ago, I'd have been like, oh, God, the rat's trying to have sex with the dog, and he gets stopped by Robert. Robert's all upset. He's like, Lucille, I thought you were a nice woman, and she's like, because she's fucking completely out of it, and I'm like... Mm -hmm. A bit awkward how long's left on the movie, people. <laughs> oh, we're only just halfway through. <laughs> Things are gonna get much, much worse. Lucille! Oh, Jesus! Robin? You've been winking! <gasps> it's okay, I finished with her anyway. Oh, go for your life, kid. She's a real good ride. Yeah, this film is definitely going to offend modern sensibilities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, th I think most people that would be so easily offended would have switched this film off long a long time ago already. Uh, don't get me wrong, like if you're not educated on Peter Jackson's first three films, this is the what this is the middle one, and so yeah, you're you're gonna get caught out. If if it was me, like like I said, I watched Bad Taste, Brain Dead, then I went back and watched Meet the Feebles like twenty years later. I wish I'd watched all three, and then I would have seen his career flourish and be like, oh fucking hell, he went from these three to all these epic movies. Um, but after watching the epic movies and then going back to Feebles, I'm like, what was your intention with this? Who were you selling this to? What was he, he, what were he, you he going he, for? He has said that he, he wanted to make a Muppet movie that gave him all of the, the cringe, sort of wild humour that made him laugh. So he wanted to make a Muppet movie that made... Peter Jackson laugh. So and that is this AIDS, drugs, rape. But it, it's it's in the context of the time and yes. of the fact that it is Muppets doing it. Yeah, that it, it that it is it is hilarious. You have yeah okay subjectively. Subjective, but that is yeah. comedy. Com like you might find we always, something we, funny, somebody else won't. That, we, it's comedy. We That's do always say that. Is. Yeah, I mean, you and I have discussed it many times. That, like comedy, I find is absolutely hilarious. You don't find and and. This this does have some really memorable good moments. I mean, in fairness, it's a better comedy than Eddie. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's probably a better comedy than Halloween and, and, Kills. And, and this has a fly in a bowl eating shit. It does. But at least he offered it <laughs> to share. so gross. <laughs> and he's eating it with the spoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is disgusting. Absolutely unhinged, batshit crazy, disgusting. All the bodily fluids you could possibly imagine <laughs> coming out of Muppets. Like we said, it's only building up to this variety hour. You know, the, the fox is so determined to get this thing out. Small bit of trivia for you. Yeah. But Peter Jackson does actually have a cameo he does. in the audience wearing the bad taste alien. Like, is that a bad taste alien or is that just somebody in a costume? I but... think, I think it's, yeah, I think it's bad taste alien. <laughs> I like the fact as well that Peter Ver Jones, uh, who played Lord Crumb in Bad Taste, and, and Stuart Devaney, um, who played Father Macruder in, in um, Brain Dead, both turn up. The, the, the priest voices Sebastian the Fox and Lord Crumb voices Bletch. And so you can kind of hear them in the background when they're talking yeah. like, hey, he kicks ass for the Lord, that fox. <laughs> I do love that Peter Jackson sort of had this core group of people that yes. he would just take from film project to film project. And, you know, that having that that crew, that, that, that familiarity and that support, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's incredible to hear, actually. Yeah. Well, this is it. Like, with all of Peter Jackson's movies, I always found, like, you know, he he gets the best from his actors because he's willing on supporting them if they're willing on supporting him. So regardless of audience's personal tastes of, the, you know, his films, he's gone from this, you know, and bad taste to, to winning Oscars, but using the same crew. Yes. You know, maybe bringing more people in. Oh, of course. But yeah. just expanding this ever big Jackson family that he's willing to go for. But... Oh my fucking god, like it just gets to this variety hour where Heidi has completely lost it at this point. She's being told she's fat, she's useless. She tries to kill herself. Fletch the walrus doesn't want to fuck her anymore because he's having sex with Samantha the cat and he's trying to set her up as the next new big star. And so she does, she tries to hang herself and she jumps and her weight obviously breaks through the floor and the rope snaps and she just falls to the ground. She then goes to Bletch's <laughs> office and she sets up this M60 so that she can shoot herself in the face. 
and Samantha the cat <laughs> walks into the room and then as she's walking out she goes you know the safety's on <laughs> that's just it that's the trigger you know oh, eat Ned you man stealing slut she picks up the M60 turns around she guns down Samantha the cat she steps outside, we catch up with the hare, who's just found out that he's actually just got like a 24 hour bug. Yeah, it's like rabbit pox. It's like rabbit pox, so he's gonna be fine. And yeah. he's just like, yeah, everybody, I'm gonna live, I'm gonna be fine. And he gets mowed down by the M60. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> the fly had even released the story. So everybody knew that he kind of had AIDS and Bletch was really upset. So he pulled the fly's wings off yeah. and threw him in the toilet and killed him. Yeah, that's, this is after he'd already eaten the, the rainbow <laughs> fish. The rainbow fish. They vomited him up later. <laughs> and then it died. He's like, did I get the part? <laughs> and because the entire feeble uh, variety hour act is in the shambles. Yeah. Sebastian the Fox is like, right, you know, I've, I've been, all the movie, I've been going on about my act, my show. I can put on a song. And because of all of everything going on behind stage, he's just like, yeah, I'm going to do my number. And he sings a wonderful song of sodomy. Let me tell you about sodomy. Hey, you must think it very odd of me. But I enjoy the act of sodomy. Hey, you might call it off a bar on me. But if you try it, then you might agree that you enjoy the act of sodomy. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, how did you even make that? Like, I'm supposed to say the stupid shit. How does a wonderful song of sodomy come out of your fucking mouth? How does anybody even have, like... I sat there listening to a song about him talking <laughs> about bum sex, and I'm like... <laughs> Somebody yeah. wrote this! Somebody rhymed this all together and went, this will be great. It got released in the album, the LP, the vinyl. They made an album of yeah, this shit! Yeah, of course, because oh. there's lots of musical numbers throughout. There are. I, I suppose that was another thing that kind of started to grate on me, is that I never didn't... Like, I'd have much preferred it if it had been, like, a complete musical. Like, if every sequence had been, like, a song, that would have maybe made the jokes a bit more. But it was the fact that every now and again, the, the vulgar jokes are being broken up by... By actual song numbers. We're not talking about small little parts. Like Heidi sings a whole fucking song of love. Yeah. We get a whole fucking sodomy song. You know, it's just... We get, what, the the, the, the weed-smoking fucking piano player singing <laughs> yeah. a song about losing a leg. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And like, these these songs are like three minutes, people. Like, yeah, yeah. it's a long fucking time to sit there going... The? <laughs> but it doesn't matter because <laughs> Heidi guns them all down. All of them. All of them. Yeah, we we see the uh, the elephant running across the stage. His kneecaps blown out as he dives to protect his his child. After his after the woman that obviously calls him a bastard gets her fucking head blown off in front right. of her child. <laughs> well, I bleed all over the child while the child's on the floor. I thought yeah. she was going to kill the baby. Yeah, I, did I honestly too, yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, not many not many feebles are spared from Heidi's wrath. Man, Abby the contortionist before before Abby, before Heidi kills everybody. Abby the contortionist fucking tries this act and he slips and his head goes completely up his own ass. And there it stays. Oh, well, for the rest <laughs> of the movie, and then he gets blasted. And she fucking guns down absolutely everybody to the point that Bletch is like, Heidi, Heidi, what are you doing? I love you. I still love you. And she fucking what? She shoots the balcony that he's on and then shoots him. And so the balcony gives way and he falls. And she's just about to kill him. Or she she's just about to kill Lucille as well. And Robert had come swinging in and saved Lucille and took her up into the rafters and was like, I love you. I never want to leave you. And, oh, it was the rat. He tried to date rape me. Oh, okay. And so then just as, as uh, Heidi is about to shoot Bletch, she gets shot in the back by the rat and hits the floor. And then fucking Robert comes back down again, takes the gun out of the rat's hands and she shoots. She blows the rat away and then turns and shoots Bletch as well. Yeah, right in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like almost everybody's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the film literally ends here as well. But we do get some title cards of the surviving Feebles <laughs> and where they are many years later. Yeah. We find out that Robert and Lucille kind of settled down. He became a photographer. Yeah, got married and everything. One of my other favourite characters was Arthur. Arthur the, 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 worm. the Worm. Yeah. Not Arthur, but Arthur. Arthur. With an F. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, yeah, just, yeah. I mean, he's a great little background character. Cigar-chomping worm. <laughs> but he's the friendly one, the approachable one. The, yeah. the one 
the one with sage advice for everybody, an actual good character. Yeah. And so you're happy that he survives. He survives. He retires from the theater group. I mean, Sid and his son Seymour become horticulturalists. Horror yeah. You know, and it says it. He even says it's not like not a very good one, or he's not doing very well. And I'm like, fucking hell, calm down, movie. You know, and then we cut to Heidi as well, and she stood by a checkout in a supermarket, looking all happy, and it's like. Yeah, she served 10 years in prison, was rehabilitated, got a new identity. I, fucking even Sebastian the Fox survives and he's trying to write a book on the Feeble Massacre and his one hero story, trying to get the movie rights for it. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian, do you happen to have any favourite scenes from the film? I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, I don't, like, am I wrong? Am I mad? Like, I have to go back and re-watch, like, ten years of off-the-shelf reviews and question everything I have ever done leading up to this point, because at this point, I have no idea what's good or bad anymore. Like, like, between the fly and shit and the fucking guy with the nose spewing out nasal sex stuff all over the cow and then doing drugs which melts his nose off and then they pour the drugs into the fucking drug dealer who melts into a puddle and then they fucking kill the crab people and then the gun shooting down at the end and just i i don't know i don't know i don't know yeah but for me <laughs> the vietnam flashback sequence that yeah. extended <laughs> sequence was outrageous like like i can't even imagine how the puppeteers managed to pull this off like it's it's absolutely incredible yeah, it's it like all, all of the fire the explosions going on the machine guns so many puppets on screen moving around the at detail once. was amazing yeah. the extra detail they put in yeah so yeah i absolutely loved the uh the the deer hunter uh, references as well really loved that part uh, of course the m60 machine gun massacre at the end just watching watching this polystyrene and this fluff and blood and guts flying everywhere i was like holy shit <laughs> like i did not expect to see this didn't you? It's a Peter Jackson movie. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, true, true. <laughs> but just like, still, still wasn't quite prepared for what I saw. Um, and of course, I think my favourite gag was the hair. Told that he's not going to die. Jumping out and celebrating and immediately getting gunned down by the M60 <laughs> machine gun. So that was great. <laughs> but I don't think I'm ever, ever going to get the image of that fly in the toilet offering to share the meal. That. that... Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's going to stick there, yeah. Well, Ian, do you recommend Meet the Feebles? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Like, I I want to say no. Part of, me, part of me wants to say no. But at the same time, part of me really did enjoy watching it. You know, ticking off that box of Peter Jackson's career. You know, seeing the extra detail. If you really look into the, I don't know, the technical side of the movie, it is really quite a marvel they even got it. You know, to this day. Yes, yeah, so low budget. So, so low, low budget. Time. Like, Jesus Christ, when you say the Japanese gave him some money, how much? $20? <laughs> you know, most of the money did go into the different puppet suits. And that really is where your eyes go, wow, this is absolutely, you know, superb. But then the stuff around it just... I just doesn't for some of it some of it hits the mark some of it doesn't but then it's all supposed to be leading up and it's like by the end of the movie I'm like is it just one big fucking joke even all the serious harsh raw gritty stuff that I feel makes me feel uncomfortable I'm supposed to go ha ha ha, ha, ha it's funny um, like I said, if you're a Peter Jackson fan and, you, and you, you've you seen Bad Taste, you've seen Bread Dead, and you've never seen Meet the Feebles, go and watch it. If you're a Peter Jackson fan and you've never seen his earlier work, you need to really see all three movies together to really get them. Because if you only watch one, you, you'll go, oh, that's wrong. And you'll go, and part of me is like, no, you need to go further. <laughs> you really need to go further. I, I love all of the movies that he's done in his career. I've really enjoyed a lot of stuff that Peter Jackson's done. Like like I said, Heavenly Creatures, The Lovely Bones, I absolutely love. I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I love the Hobbit trilogy. I know people who absolutely can't stand the Hobbit trilogy. And I'm like, you know what, motherfucker? Go back and watch Meet the Feebles. <laughs> Well, I kind of have to absolutely <laughs> recommend Meet the Feebles, but not to everybody. No! <laughs> it's the Muppets meet Team America. It's vulgar, filled with profanity, sex, drugs, and soft toys. 
It's overly ridiculous in places, fairly shocking and extreme, mm. very cringe-inducing, yet it's so over the top, it gets the laughs. It is a comedy, and as always, you'll know already that whether this is a film f worth watching for you. The narrative is straightforward. It's easy to follow. There's a multitude of gags as the ensemble prepare for the big opening night as we follow the Feebles backstage as everything falls apart. The puppets and costumes are fantastic. The miniatures really well crafted. The music numbers really well written and performed. It's a marvel that so much was achieved on such a scale with such a low budget. You can tell that this was a real labor of love from everyone that worked on it. The biggest gripe, though, about watching Meet the Feebles is the current format, which is a DVD, which is a rip of a VHS. Mm. The quality is really poor, even affecting the sound levels as much as the visuals. Peter Jackson has mentioned nearly what, five years ago at this point that there will be a Blu-ray or 4K restoration in the works. Mm. But till then, I think it's still worth tracking down to meet the Feebles. The adult Muppet movie to offend everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching Off the Shelf Reviews. Let me tell you about sodomy. Hey, you must think it very odd of me. But I enjoy the act of sodomy. Hey, you might call it off a part on me. But if you try to, then you might agree that you enjoy the act of sodomy. Oh, shit.